Hello my friends, today we will turn this. Into this. I will show you how I mix the bass chords and leads in my future house drops to get as much power as possible. I will show you step by step all the mixing effects I added and why I added them. You can also download the mixer chains we are creating in this video for free to load in your FL Studio project. But first I just wanna quickly say that I recently released my own future house sample pack with 5 professional future house FLPs, 275 samples and 130 presets for serum and silenth 1. The link is in the description. Alright my good man, when we are all done with creating the bass chords and lead, let's start by adding them to mixer tracks. First let's add the bass. The bass will actually take up two mixer tracks. We'll add the mid bass layers to this track and the sub bass layer to this track. Then we'll add the chords to this track and lastly the lead to this track. Now the first thing we're gonna do is drag the volume down a bit on all the mixer tracks so the master won't be too loud. Now let's play around with the different volume knobs to find a nice balance. That sounds nice. So the first element we're gonna mix is the bass line. When mixing a future house drop, power and fatness is everything. So our main goal here is to make the bass a whole lot more powerful and crispy while still sounding clean. But how can we achieve that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is to remove some unnecessary frequencies and shape the sound to what we want. Now that we've shaped the sound a bit, let's try to make it more powerful and fat by adding some compression and distortion. I'm gonna use Camel Crusher which is a free plugin. After I've added distortion I like to add a new EQ removing the low end. This is because distortion adds a lot of new frequencies to the sound. Let's also clean up the high end a bit. Nice. Now we'll add compression with OTT. We'll add quite a lot to make it really tight. After that let's add some more distortion to fill out the sound. Since we added a lot of compression and distortion we have to clean up the sound a bit with an additional EQ. Now that the bass sounds clean we can make it even more powerful using this sound -gidizer. This sound -gidizer makes the bass a whole lot more powerful, but it also boosts some ugly frequencies. But there's an easy fix. We'll just add one last EQ and remove the ugly frequencies. Alright you guys, this is what the bass sounds like without the mixing. And this is with the mixing. Sounds a lot more powerful and crispy. Now let's quickly compress the sub bass. We'll do that using OTT. We'll also remove the high and mid frequencies since the sub should only have very low frequencies. Now my friends, let's mix the chords. The chords are very low volume and our goal here is to push them to oblivion. Since they are so low volume you can't really hear them that good in the mix. Therefore we have to really push them to the limits. We'll start by shaping the sound with an EQ. Then let's add a lot of compression with OTT. Guys, since the chords are so low in the mix they shouldn't sound clean. They should be really dirty and powerful to add fullness to the drop. Now let's add some distortion with fruity fast disc to make them fuller and crispier. And even more distortion and compression using Camel Crusher. When we're adding a lot of compression and distortion, it's important to add an EQ afterwards to clean up the sound.
Now let's add even more power with this sound judizer. And finish off with a CQ. Guys, the last thing we're gonna add is this fruity stereo shaper which makes the chords stereo. As you can hear it makes them a lot wider. I do this every time for the chords in my drops. Alright guys, this is the chords without the mixing. And this is with the mixing. This is the bass and chords together without the mixing. And this is with the mixing. Nice. Guys, I would truly appreciate it if you subscribed and turned on post notifications. Now my wonderful people, we are finally gonna mix the lead. This is in my opinion the most important part of the mixing process as it really defines the drop. Our goal here is to make it powerful as f and really distorted without sounding over compressed and muddy. I'm also gonna show you a trick I use often which makes the lead more unique sounding. Alright guys, this is what we're starting with. Since the lead sounds quite clean to begin with, we can start with distortion using fruity fast dist. Now let's remove some unnecessary frequencies. Guys, we'll add quite a bit of OTT for some power and tightness. Let's remove the rest of the low frequencies with a CQ. Guys, let's also add the Sanjidizer which makes the lead a lot bigger. Now we're gonna add some more distortion and compression with Camel Crusher. And a final EQ to shape the sound to what we want. Guys this is a little trick I was talking about. We're gonna add a fruity phaser and drag the mix down to around 25%. This makes the lead sound a bit more unique. Let's also add a reverb. I'm gonna use Valhalla Frequency Echo which is a free plugin but you can just use a stock reverb if you want. We're gonna control the reverb with a reverb automation. The last thing we're gonna add is this fruity stereo shaper which makes the lead wider. Alright my friends, this is what the lead sounds like without the mixing. And this is with. Sounds a lot bigger. Now, this is all the elements we've mixed without the mixing. And this is with the mixing. Guys, this is how I mix the melodic elements of my future house and future bounce drops. If you found this useful, it would really help me out if you liked and subscribed. I would sincerely appreciate it if you went and checked out the sample pack. The link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Love you guys.